say it's Todd Alt, this is risk on a special edition. We're not going to count this number, but I think it'd be 209, but it's not 209. This is a special edition of Mullen Automotive, yet another fast talking EV hustle. According to Hendenburg Research, now we're going to cover a ton of topics here, but main, one main one, and this is about the battery life. We're going to have the engineer that did the testing on that was quoted in the report. And I want to cover, you know, I want to cover short selling. I think it's an important part of what happens uh, in the investment world. I have no issue. I know some people in the audience are feverishly against Hindenburg. Uh, I don't have an issue with them. I, I run a hedge fund. I do short from time to time. It is a useful tool. And Hindenburg, you know, has been successful at things like Nikola, identifying issues, et cetera. And I'm not taking a position against Hindenburg. I um, simply was offered an opportunity to interview um, someone who is involved in the battery research that was quoted in the report. And we're going to interview him because he claims that he was misquoted. He claims uh, and provided us data that we're going to bring up to him, including reports and testing. Um, and if you read the Hindenburg report, uh, Talks about the company spiking uh, and and uh, you know a, a lot about the solid state battery. It here says uh, that it announced the solid state battery claims. And uh, unfortunately for Henneberg, today we're going to have the guy who did the testing on. He's going to talk about what actually happened and how he thinks he was misquoted. Um, Jason, you remember that Henneberg report a few days ago? Got anything to talk about there? So we're going to have uh, Mr. Tom Gage on. And uh, he'll be able to set the record straight from his point of view. And we're just going to act as a, a forum here to deliver the news from, uh, from his so side. So if you read Hindenburg's report, it says, initial disclosure, after extensive research, we have taken a short position in Mullen shares, Mullen Automotive, uh, MULN on the NASDAQ. The report re uh, represents our opinion. We encourage everyone readers to do their own due diligence. Please see our full disclaimer at the bottom of the report. So let me give you our full disclaimer. Um, Bitnile, through a subsidiary, Digital Power Lending, has made an investment in the company. Um, it made an investment when it was a private company before it merged through a, a reverse merger with NetElement. We, I'd met David Mystery uh, one time ever. I went and toured the facility. That was about, I think, a month or so ago. Um, I did an interview with him on my podcast one time. I've spoken to him three times by phone. Those conversations were less than five minutes. Um, I have absolutely no bias here, except that we are long the stock because we bought it as a private company. I want to be crystal clear. We're not recommending the trading of the stock. However, we are going to represent the other side of what's taken place. And you have a pretty successful engineer, Tom Gage, who's joining us now. And uh, Jason, if you could make an introduction about Tom Gage. And by the way, just for clear, Tom is going to be reporting independently of what he wants to cover here. He's quoted in the report. For the record, I've never met Mr. Gage. Um, I don't know him. No one on this broadcast has been paid in any way by me, risk on. Um, I have no association with Mr. Gage of any way. We are simply giving you for entertainment purposes his side of the story. And we have every reason to believe that he'll be truthful and honest about whatever he thinks about uh, the battery technology. Jason, go ahead. Mr. Sure. Gage is going to be on in a second. Can you cover uh, the uh, report? Yeah, let's give just a little backstory here. Uh, we're going to have Tom on in just a moment. So on February 28th, Mullen issued a press release updating its progress on the development of its solid state polymer battery technology. The release included recent developments and additional details on testing conducted by independent testing lab EV Grid, suggesting that the battery may be capable of allowing an electric vehicle to travel more than 600 miles on a single charge. In a report issued Tuesday, which caused the company's stock to decline as much as 25 percent, the centerpiece of short seller Hindenburg's allegations was that Mullen misrepresented the results of the battery testing technology that caused the stock to surge more than 300% 300, 300 off of its lows. Today, in an interview, we have Mr. Tom Gage, a scientist and chief executive officer of EV Grid, to address the test results 
and to exclusively share with our audience whether Hindenburg accurately described his conversation with them. Mr. Gage, welcome and thank you for joining the Risk On podcast. Thank you. It's good to be here. Todd, are you muted? Mr. Gage, it's Todd. All, where are you? Uh, what are it looks like you're, was that Marina Del Rey? I'm actually in Long Beach at the uh, Long Beach Grand Prix. What? Oh, Tom, <laughs> what are you talking about? We have a car here. We're here. I'm in, I'm in Long Beach, too. Okay. <laughs> Tom, we're, we're running the number 20 car with, with Connor Daly, Ed Carpenter Racing. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'll come see you. Awesome. Oh, that'd be great. Mr. Gage, li listen, I, I, I know that, you, listen, we don't have a problem. And just for the record, I need you to understand, we're long uh, Mullen. We own it. We bought into it uh, as a private company. So clearly, we have our own thought process on the future of it. And we're not recommending the stock. And I know you're not doing that either. But you did the research on the battery. Is there anything you can give us some insight as to your thoughts on the battery testing. Jason uh, was talking about a 600 potential mile battery life. I wondered if you could give any commentary. Sure. Um, we did test the battery um, for Mullen. We were doing some other work on uh, some other packs for them and, and uh, they delivered uh, this, this one cell for us to test, which we did test and we can talk about the results of that. Um, the 600 mile number, I mean, that's just uh, uh, that's a number that depends on how big the car is, how big the battery is, and how efficient uh, the drivetrain and aerodynamics are. So it's quite possible to do it um, until it's done under, you know, um, observed conditions. You don't really know what you're talking about, but uh, uh, if you put enough battery in a car, it can go 600 miles. All right. Do you, do you feel do you feel like that it, with Hindenburg that you were misquoted, or do you want to set the record straight at all, or? Or what do you, what did you think of the report? I'm just curious as to, you know, just you can acknowledge, Mr. Gage, we've never spoken till today. This is the first conversation we ever had other than a text earlier this morning. So I have no idea what you're going to say next. But but your thoughts on the Hindenburg report or do you want to comment at all about it? Well, sure. I, I did look through the report and uh, he covered a lot of ground. Um, but I want to clarify when he called me, um, I I did remember testing it, but I couldn't remember the results or how we tested it or, or, or when actually, but I did find the report that we submitted to Mullen on the, on the testing. And it was a legit test. The test results we got showed that the battery had 343 amp hours of capacity, which is, which is a lot of capacity for a single cell, but it, then again, it was a very large in physical size. So I think the results are believable. Um, we only did one cycle on the cell uh, because our, our equipment was for uh, lower current testing. So that one cycle took almost 30 hours. So it was a very slow discharge, which uh, tends to give you a larger capacity. But I think the capacity is legit. The number we have is legit for a, a slow discharge. So, so Mr. Gage, I'm going to interrupt for a second. Yeah. Just to bring you back to the report on, on Henningberg then. So you feel comfortable that 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 you were misquoted in the report or what would you you know what how would you characterize um the way that you were characterized in the report well i think partly because i had a little trouble remembering when i was talking to the reporter and also because uh well it sounded like he may have been questioning whether we had tested the battery at all but uh and if i gave him that impression that was that was uh, <laughs> that was erroneous we did test the battery um on one cycle, and it didn't give the results that we reported in the. No, I was just going to say to set the record straight, Tom. Um, you did test the battery. You did put it through a cycle, and and the what rep what Mullen represented about the battery, your testing, you believe was correct. Yes. Yeah. He he. Uh, okay. I think there was another report. Uh, he summarized our findings. Guys, we may have lost Tom, and we may get back to him. But I think the most important thing to understand is. We are not trying here to discredit uh, Hennenberg's research. They may or may not be onto something. That's up to them. Uh, in fact, we happen to be long the stock, so obviously we're clearly biased to, to the fact that we own it. But we did get Tom to talk about that he was misquoted. And, and obviously Tom does a lot of testing, so he can't be expected to remember everything on the fly the moment that he's called by an analyst. 
Um, but we do appreciate Tom giving us some clarity. Anyways, guys, obviously that we put this on the fly. Tom became available to us. We wanted to bring it directly to everyone watching. And so obviously one part of the Mullen report uh, is clearly uh, in dispute by Mullen because Tom did test the battery. Tom, we appreciate you being with us, obviously for setting the record straight that Mullen did do the report with you and the results are as reported. I think that's important. Tom, thanks so much for being with us, my friend. Hey, and we'll circle back with you. I'll look to, to meet up with you at the Long Beach Grand Prix. Jason, any good. thoughts before we exit? Yeah, yeah, Tom, one more question. You, Tom. If you don't mind, Tom, one more question. Sure. Do you, is there a scenario where you could be doing uh, further research and more testing for Mullen? Uh, I just wanted to get an answer on that one. Uh, well, yeah, I would be glad to. EV Grid's a little bit dormant right now. I've been doing advisory work for some other companies. and uh, um, But, you know, I, I did see Mullen at the LA Auto Show. I thought their car looked great. And uh, this is a funny business. You know, people make all kinds of claims and pretty much every company out there may exaggerate from time to time, but uh, you never know who's going to come out with something really good. So, uh, uh, you know, keep your eyes open. That's all sure. I can say. Okay. Just to summarize the, uh, you did test the battery for Mullen. Uh, you, you were clear about that, correct? Yeah, we were, we, we tested it. Results were clear. Uh, the report is available. Okay. Wants Please to take note of this. If you uh, are trading the stock, we are not recommending the buyer selling of Mullen. We uh, are long the stock because we invested in it when it was a private company. Obviously, ironically, if you look at the reports and you see how much shares we own versus our market cap, it's a strange conversation for me how large the position has become relative to the size of the company. Uh, however, we do appreciate you guys. It's Friday afternoon. It's 1117 on the West Coast. Jason, I don't know when you're going to get here, but get in the car, my friend. What's I'm, taking you so long? I'm rolling right now. Too bad I didn't have one of those batteries. Everybody, everybody, we appreciate you uh, logging on today to the special edition of Risk On. Special thanks to Tom Gage for being available. And he's at the Long Beach Grand Prix with us, so we're going to check Tom, Tom out, go shake his hand, etc. Go Connor Daly, go Reeves VK, Ed Carpenter Racing. This is Risk On, everybody. Take care. We'll see you again next week. Remember, we come back on the 18th. We'll be back on the 18th. Uh, we are taking next week off. As I'm traveling internationally, everybody take care. Obviously, for Mullen, it's good news that Tom came forward. Uh, obviously, a lot of other things in the report. I know uh, the CEO had texted me this morning how disappointed he is in uh, what he considers to be misrepresentations by by uh, uh, Hendenburg. However, shorting is part of the process. Uh, being long, being short, being hedged, this is part of the process of investing and it's a natural part of the evolution of a company. I remember people saying that Tesla was a fraud. In fact, if you type in Tesla fraud and Elon Musk, you'll see that Elon Musk was charged by the SEC. All kinds of things have happened. And it's part of the game as the company evolves and develops and becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. It's part of the game. So everybody, uh, listen, this is just one step. Uh, uh, Mullen has their own vision of what EV is gonna look like. And obviously we'll see what happens Special thanks to Tom Gage again, Jason for staying back, Brett for coming in the office on his day off, Willie, Christy, everybody involved. Everyone, we'll see you later. Risk on everybody. Whatever your business is, if you want to scale it, you want to be here, we're going to have lots of other people there that have actually built businesses. This will make somebody's life about a thousand times better. you got a business and you want to expand your business, whether you're in the restaurant business, you're in technology, whatever your business is, if you want to scale it, you want to be here. This is going to be a conference where you can learn something, meet people and network. and limited slots are available. Head over to Tottle.com and register today.